Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachakodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of great Muslim, and we will peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and above all. Back at it with another listen through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. And Lord will, this video is edifying. This is an impromptu flowing in the spirit, you know, and, um, I just want to touch on this maybe a little taboo topic may not be but um you know you guys can't fake the funk man all right uh all no no one can fake the funk man all right the how about me outside can see through everything man all right this is um first john 3 and 20 it's lock you First John chapter 3 verse 20 It says For if our hearts condemn us Yahweh Bashem Yahshai is greater than our heart And knoweth all things Alright so the Lord knoweth all things man Okay The Lord can see through all things Now let me get another precept This is 2nd Ezra 16 Starting at uh, Verse 61 It says he made man And put his heart in the midst of the body And gave him breath Life and understanding. Okay. Salakio. Verse 62. Yeah, and the spirit of the almighty power, which made all things and searched out all hidden things in the secrets of the earth. Okay. So the Lord searches out all hidden things, man. The Lord knows everything that is hidden and everything that is manifest. All right. Let me get this scripture real quick. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7. I'll start at verse 16. It says, um... For in his hand are both we and our words, all wisdom also and the knowledge of workmanship. All right, and here are some of the things of wisdom, right? Verse 17, for he hath given me certain knowledge of things that are namely to know how the world was made and the operation of the elements, the beginning, ending, in the midst of times, the alterations of the turning of the sun and the change of seasons, the circuits of years and the positions of stars, the natures of living creatures and the furies of wild beasts, the violence of winds and the reasonings of men, the diversities of plants and the virtues of roots and all such things them I know all right so that's the point of that right there wisdom is saying all things that are secret or manifest them I know and there's another scripture where it says wisdom came without came up out of the mouth of the most high all right and also when you read wisdom of Solomon or no Sirach rather Sirach one and one it says um all wisdom here is at the bottom, but I guess you could look at the top of the screen. Sirach one and one. All wisdom coming from the Lord and is with Him forever. So it said, "All things secret or manifest, them I know." Roughly paraphrasing. That's Wisdom of Solomon seven, as we just read. All right, Wisdom of Solomon seven in uh, verse twenty one. It says, "And all such things as are secret or manifest, them I know." All right, now let me go back to Second Ezra sixteen. Verse 62, yeah, in the spirit of the almighty power, which made all things and searcheth out all hidden things in the secrets of the earth. It says, surely he knoweth your inventions and what you think and what you think in your hearts, even them that sin and would hide their sins. So for all you guys who want to fake the funk, the most I can see through all that. All right. You know, because even to a certain degree, his men can see through it, you know. So if you can't fake the funk with his men, how much more you have about shine? All right. And matter of fact, the demons know who really is serious about this truth and who is not. Yes, the demons, they know who is truly serious about this truth and who is not. OK, and we're going to get into that next. Lord, willing. this is second Ezra 16 and uh, verse 64. Therefore, hath the Lord exactly searched out all your works and he will put you all to shame. And when your sins are brought forth, you shall be ashamed before men and your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. What will ye do, or how will ye hide your sins before Yahweh Bashem Al Shai and his angels? Okay, are not the demons the Lord's angels? Okay, and there's counsel in the heavens, man. All right, there's counsel in the heavens concerning every last soul, man. All right, there's a judgment written, whether it be a judgment to salvation or a judgment to perdition, 
written for every last soul. All right. So the demons know who who who's who in the spirit, man. Okay, they know who's really about this thing and who's not. Bear with me. This is uh, second as the judge fear him. Leave off from your sins and forget your forget your iniquities to meddle no more with them forever. So shall Yahweh Bashim al Shai lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. Okay. Now, like I said, the demons know what's good, man. They know who's who, man. They know who is a true man of the Lord and who's a faker, man. All right, this is Job chapter 1 and verse 4. Or it's like it, Job 1 and 6. Now there was a day when the sons of the Most High came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them, because Satan is a son of the Most High. All right, verse 7. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth the Most High and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear the Most High for naught? Okay, has not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. All right. But put forth now, but put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only upon himself, put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. All right, so right there, Satan, I mean, Satan knew that Job was a man of the Lord. He said, Does Job fear thou for not? So Satan knew that Job was a, uh, a, a quote-unquote God-fearing man. All right, so the demons, they know who is, who's really about this truth and who's not. Okay? And um, let's get some more scriptures. All right, a lot of times when uh, Yahweh Shai was on the scene, all right, those demons would see him afar off or, they, you know, and Yahweh Shai would shut them up, man. You know they knew, they knew who uh, they knew who Yahweh Shai was, you know. All right, let's see. Let's get a precept. Whoo, man! This is Luke four and forty one one four four. All right, but I actually started um verse forty. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with diverse diseases brought them unto him. And he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And the devils also came out of many, crying out and saying, Thou art Mashiach, the son of the Most High. And he rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Mashiach. So they, the demons knew who Yahweh Shai was. And there's a lot more examples of that, you know, to prove that the demons knew who Yahweh Shai was, man. So this and they guess what the right hand side angels know the deal too, man. All right, through the spirit. Okay, but nonetheless, let me get another precept. All right. This is Acts nineteen, starting at um. Eleven. It says, uh, "And the Most High wrought special miracles." By the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Yahweh Shai, saying, We adjure you by Yahweh Shai, whom Paul preacheth. You know, so they didn't truly believe. In the names of Yahweh Shemel Shai. They thought it's just that simple. You call in a name is that simple. But no, you have to be a part of that chosen seed line. You got to be a part of that elect, you know, in order to be able to call upon the name of Yahweh Shemel Shai and the Lord hear you, okay, and grant your petition, you know. And it says, And there were seven sons, one of one Seva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Yahweh Shai I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? Okay, so the demons, they know who's really about this thing and who's not. Okay? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them. Why? Because they didn't have the spirit of Yahweh Shai backing them up. 
Because the scriptures talk about how we're more than conquerors through Yahweh Bashem El Shai. You know? And that the spirit of Yahweh Shai is above all principalities, man. All right? The devils, they tremble in fear at Yahweh Bashem El Shai. But when Yahweh Bashem El Shai is not backing an individual up, it doesn't matter what the person does, man. The Lord is still to let those demons prevail over them, you know, if it be his will. Okay? Because the scriptures talk about uh, all those that name the name of Yahweh Shai depart from iniquity. Okay? And these dudes weren't really weren't truly rooted in the faith, man. So they were calling on the name of Yahweh Shai for naught. This is 2 Timothy 2 and 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Most High standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. The Lord knoweth them that are his. So the Most High, Yahweh Shai, they, they, they know who their sheep are. That's why Yahweh Shai said unto the wicked scribes and Pharisees in John the 10th chapter, I have told you, but ye believe not, because ye are none of my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and I'm known of them. You know, roughly paraphrasing. So the Lord knows who are his. It says, and let everyone that nameth the name of Mashiach depart from iniquity. All right? So... I'm going to read this again, Acts 19 and 15. And the evil spirit answered and said, Yeah, I was shy, I know. And Paul, I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded, you know, because the Lord allowed that demon to put a can of whoop ass on them, man. All right. This is Luke 6 and 46. It says, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? You know, so these men, they're trying to call in the name of Yahweh Bashem al Shai, but they weren't truly rooted in Yahweh Bashem al Shai. So why are they calling upon him, Lord, Lord, but they're not doing the things which he requires of them, man? You know? All right, and these, and these, these uh, demons and the angels on the right hand and on the left hand side, they both tremble in fear before Yahweh Bashem al Shai. It's James 2 and 19. Thou believest that there is one power, thou do as well. The devils also believe and tremble. All right, so the demons they know, and the angels on the right hand side they know Yahweh Bashem Al Shai. They they're in the presence of Yahweh Bashem Al Shai. You know they know the true power, man. They they fear Yahweh Bashem Al Shai. Okay, this is um Second Ezra's chapter eight and verse um. 20. O Lord, thou that dwellest in everlastingness, which beholdest from above things in the heaven and in the air, whose throne is inestimable, whose glory may not be comprehended, but for whom the host of angels stand with trembling. And the demons are a part of the host, the heavenly host, man. All right, believe it or not. They do the bidding of the Most High. They're not doing their own, you know, ulterior. Uh, uh, ulterior motive and agenda they're doing exactly what the most High tells them to do just like how we read back in the book the angels on the right hand and on the left hand side both do the bidding of yahweh bashim al shai let me back that up with the scripture all right but let me let me see let me back that up with the scripture real quick all right psalms I believe it might be Psalms 103. Psalms 103, starting at verse 20. It says, Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. So the angels, they do the bidding of the Most High on the left hand and on the right hand side. The demons do the bidding of the Most High as well as the righteous angels. Verse 21, which they're both technically righteous, but one is righteous for doing wickedness, <laughs> you know. If it makes sense to you or if you can receive it and the other is righteous for doing righteousness, you know, but they're both technically righteous because they do the bidding of the most high. Nonetheless, um, I'm read this again. Psalms 103 and 20. Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts. Ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. OK, so they do. His pleasure. All right. Sometimes it's the Lord's pleasure to send evil angels or evil spirits among a person, among an individual, man. All right. So if the Lord can send an evil spirit upon someone 
then he can take it off. Okay? So the demons know who's, who, who has the seal of the Most High. You know? And that's why they said what they said to those uh, vagabond Jews, man. All right? This is uh, Sirach or Ecclesiastes 39. I'll start at verse 27. All these things are for good to the godly, so to the sinners they are turned into evil. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. And a part of those spirits created for vengeance are demons, man. All right. Fire and hell and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents and the sword. Punishing the wicked to destruction. They shall rejoice in his commandment and they shall be ready upon earth when need is. And when their time has come, they shall not transgress his word. Okay. So they do the Lord's bidding, man. And they're happy to do the Lord's bidding. All right. The angels on the right hand and on the left hand side, both are happy to do the Lord's bidding, man. Okay. Now, let me see if I get this one more scripture, Lord willing. I probably close out. Let's see if I find this scripture. Bear with me, Bible Show. Um, let's see what scripture is there. To get. Okay, Psalms seventy. I believe it might be seventy-eight or seventy-six. Okay, Psalm 78 and 49, it says, He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath and indignation, and trouble by sending evil angels among them. All right, so the Lord, he sends evil angels among people. Just like how he did to the Egyptians, he can do it again. The Lord has evil angels set up to do his bidding, and they take pleasure in that, man. Okay, and when you go back to the time of uh, King David, you know, where... Uh, um, let's see. Here it is. Second Samuel 24 and 1. And then again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And he moved David against him to say, go and number Israel and Judah. All right. So King David went off by trying to take a census over Israel and Judah. Right. But when you go. Okay. And let's go to verse 15. 2 Samuel 24 and 15. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning even to the time appointed. And there died of the people from Dan even to Beersheba 70,000 men. And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord repented him of the evil and said to the angel that destroyed the people, It is enough to stay now thine hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing place of Aruna the Jebusite. All right. So that's the point of that right there. The Lord, he pulled back that angel, you know, because that angel was slaying the people, man. So it's the same thing. They do the bidding of the Most High and they take pleasure in his commandments, man. OK, so they know who's really into this thing and who's not. And when you also you go into the book of Ezekiel, chapter nine. All right. Well, you just start from verse one. It says he cried also in mine ears with a loud voice saying, cause them that have charge over the city to draw near even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And this is talking about death angels, man. All right. It's not talking about men. It's talking about death angels. Now, the Lord could put the spirit of a death angel on a man to kill somebody. All right. But the Lord is having this counsel with the death angels. All right. And as we continue on, Lord willing, we'll bring it out. Verse two. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lies toward the north and every man with a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen with a writer's inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. Now, it says he was clothed with linen. Correct. But that's the attire of the angels. Let's go ahead and get the precept. Revelation 19. And I'll start at verse 11. And I saw heaven and open and behold, a white horse referring to Yahweh Shai coming back on the fathership. And the white horse horse represents power. You know, so Yahweh Shai white also represents purity and righteousness. So he's come back with pure, righteous power, man, on that fathership. All right. To take down you different nations and to set up his kingdom here on the earth. It says, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness. He did judge and make war. And that's referring to our Lord Yahweh Shai. All right. And that's another, that's another scripture to prove that he's the word of the most high. Because when you read second Ezra to 15th chapter from the top, it said, write the most high's words in, in paper for they are faithful and true. 
Okay, so that's another subtle way to prove that Yahweh Shai is the word. It says, His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Verse 13, And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, because the Lord is coming back to do a lot of bloodshed. All right? And his name is called the Word of God. That's another title for Yahweh Shai, the Word. That's why the scriptures talk about how, in John the first chapter, how the Word was made flesh. All right? Verse 14, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, meaning the chariots, the angels coming with the chariots along with Yahweh Shai. It says, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. So that fine linen, that's the attire of the angels, man. Okay, let's get another scripture to back that up. This is Acts chapter 1, starting at... Uh, Verse 6, when they therefore were come together, they asked of saying, Lord, will thou at this time again restore the king? It's like it. Will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost parts of the earth. So, Lord willing, we be those witnesses of Yahweh Bashem El Shai. So, with that being said, the demons know. The demons know who the Lord's witnesses are, man. Just like how they knew who Yahweh Shai was and they knew who Paul was. Same way now in this present time, man. Okay? Um, and it says, verse 9, And when they had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. That cloud is referring to a chariot. All right? Verse 10, and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood them stood by them in white apparel. And those are two angels. Okay. It says, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Yahweh Shai, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. All right. So Yahweh Shai is coming back in the chariot, just like how he left in the chariot. All right. He's coming back with the chariots. All right. So it said two men in, 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 in linen, white and clean, right? Now as well, let's get another one, Lord Wynn. Um, John 20, I'll start at verse 11. But Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. And she seeth two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Yahushai had lain. Okay, so the angels were wearing white. So going back to Ezekiel 9, where it talks about the man in linen, is this the attire of the angels? Okay, Ezekiel 9 and 3, and the glory of, of the Most High, the slack in the glory of the power of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was to the threshold of the house, and he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. So these angels, they know who has that mark. Just like how back during the time of ancient Egypt, when they had the blood over the doorposts, so that the death angel, which was our Lord Yahweh Shai, if you can receive it, came through and wouldn't slay their firstborn of their household. Okay? So the same thing. That's how that that's how that, that mark, which you can go into that word mark in this particular scripture, the word there is Dawa, which means a mark of exemption. So these angels, they could see, okay, who the most high is dealing with and who he and who Yahweh Shai is not dealing with. Alright? It says And he's and to the others he said in mine hearing, go ye after him through the city, smite and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they begin at the ancient men which were before the house. So you have to th you have to think about it. The Lord said, Come not near any man whom is the mark. Alright, and the scriptures say how they the angels they rejoice to do his commandment. They rejoice to do his bidding. So if the Most High gave them a command, they rejoice in it. And a part of those commands is to do what? Is to come not near any man whom the mark is upon. All right. So with that being said, they know, OK, we can't touch this man because he's the elect, you know. Now, that doesn't mean that, you know, the Lord can't have a demon chastise you, so on and so forth, like what happened with Job, you know. But at the end of the day, the demons know, OK, this one is a special vessel to Yahweh Shai, and they know this one is not. All right, that's why Yahweh says, Simon, Simon, Satan have desired to sift you as wheat, you know? 
Because these demons, they know, man. They know who, oh, I don't like this one, man. He, he's converting a lot of souls, you know. You know, that's how, that's how they get down. Now, I don't know exactly what they're, how they're talking and what they're saying to each other. But, you know, we have an idea through the precepts, you know. But there is counsel in the heavens concerning us, man. You know. Just like how Satan wanted the, uh, the body of Moses. But Michael... The archangel said, Yahweh Bashem Hashem, I rebuke thee, you know? So these devils, and I'm talking about the spiritual demons, all right? Esau too, but I'm talking about the spiritual demons, Satan. They know who the true men of the Lord are and who are and who is not, okay? All right, now let me read this again. Ezekiel 9 and 6, lay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. I'm going to show you the Most High doesn't discriminate, man. Judge, men can go to a little baby or an old person. But come not near any a man upon whom is the mark. And they began at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient man which were before the house. And he said unto them, Defile the house and fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. And it came to pass while they were slaying them. And I was left and I, that I fell upon my face. Why? Because Ezekiel was a man of the Lord. <laughs> so Ezekiel was left, right? And it says, and cried and said, Our Lord, power, will thou destroy all the residue of Israel in thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? Then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood, and the city is full of perverseness. For they say, The Lord hath forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not. And as for me also, mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. And behold, the man clothed with linen, going back to an angel, which had the inkhorn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as thou hast commanded me. Why? Because they take pleasure in the commandment of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai, man. The angels do his bidding, man. So if the Lord sends an angel to, you know, give a man skill, Give a man succor and aid. It's going to do it cheerfully. If the Lord send an angel to slay a man, it's going to do it cheerfully. You know? And that's just a fact of the matter. You know what I'm saying? Now, let me see if I get a... Um, let me see. I'll probably, I'll probably close out with that. You know? But I just want to check out this one scripture, if anything. See if I can get a little bit more, you know, meat to prove this. Let me go to Sirach. Sirach or Ecclesiasticus. 43 and 5 it says great is the lord that made it and at his commandment it runneth hastily it's like it and at his commandment runneth hastily all right and that's talking about the uh the works within the heavens all right but everything at the lord's commandment runneth hastily you know meaning when the lord commands something to be done it is done you know same thing with the angels and the demons, man. They do the most highest bidding. So, uh, Lord will, this video was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem El Shai, Bashem Chakwadash, double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. There were well, peace, and blessings to you like the Israel, Shalom, and the Barber Ball. All in all, the most high, Yahweh, Bashem El Shai, as well as the heavenly host, man, they know who's serious about this truth and who's not. You know, so with that, Shalom, and the Barber Ball.